Parshas Vayelo. Rabbeinu Shalom. Parshas Vayelo is the number one Slabodki Parsha. I want to thank Torani Time, Kabbish Kachapratis, and Kerala Loshan with Rabbi Yosef Yafi. I want to thank all the great work they're doing. Hashem should reward them. Come inside, Aaron. It's it's raining outside? Yeah. Pleasure to see you. When you come in late, when you come in, uh, if it rains, you get double sky. In our religion, the Taiva is ridiculous. Avram Avinu, he was alone. What did he have? Grada, his Rebbe was Nayach. As I'll say, <coughs> from Avinu Esnei, how'd you get out of the table alive? Said I was like icing a chesed with the animals. Animals are not a joke. Be nice to animals. Tzabel Chaim Deraisa. Asa was not nice to animals. He hunted them. Because he hunted animals, he ended up Killing them right was a Russia. He killed a Russia. I don't know. Killed him. Maybe you're supposed to kill a Russia. That's a different schmooze. Uh, he became a murderer. Why didn't Yaakov kill him? It's such a mitzvah to kill him, no? Why? There was something in Asaph that was not the killing. It wasn't so push it when he killed them right. Uh, but it's not that bad. In the end, he was out to kill Yaakov. Started with animals. You don't mess around with animals. Started chepering animals. Now what's Noyach? Noyach told told Avram Avinu. Merger says, Avram said, "How'd you get out alive from the Teva?" So Noyach said, "Because I took care of the animals. It was the sort of chesed that I did. Took care of the animals, and that's how I got out." The person has to be a chet of goodness. It's you. Say you don't even care that much who, where, heading. You need to give and give. That's you. When you're giving, you need to find. Our Romavino slept along, light his sidekick wherever he went. What do you need him for? To give. Oh, Oh, Avram slept to loves to give and give. I've got to find aids to give. That's the whole give an animal, give anybody, just give, give. You have to give. That's, that's the Matthias of a person. Avram is so full of love, he doesn't know how to stop. The Psukim are ridiculous. He loved people. But he wanted, he he went wild. They say he so salata. When he, uh, he went Meshuggah. He was Bohol, it says. And that's Avram. And in Slabodki, boy, did they but Kirchus. In this parsha, Til Shani, there's not Shaykh. Slabodki was in Kedalta, and Slabodki sat on that his whole life. Where you're supposed to be Marach, a human being. The person in front of you is the Abishta himself. You can't really get to the Abishta. You want to get to the Abishta, that the human beings around you, they're all Abishtas. And Avram was into that. He stuck up for Sdaim. Wanted to save Sdaim, like the other Achaman Hassan. Sdaim, Roshim Achaman is love. You know, it says that uh, there's a Rashi in Devarim that says that Avram Avinu was given three nations that belong to him Seir, Amai, Mayab, mine. So who is he going to give it to? Sayer went to Esav, that's his anical. And as soon as Light did not give away, he could have said, Paray, you know who's in that box? That's his wife. He's playing a game on you. Light could have done that. It would have been Azorius, ingrate. This man adopted you. Your father was killed in the fire. No one cares about you except your uncle Avram. But Gamla Light, he made you wealthy. Everything. You owe him your life. And because he didn't give him away, 
he could have told Pari that Avram is playing a, t- a trick. Could have told that to Pari. And he didn't. Oh. Says Rashi in Dvarim, you are my son. For that, you're my son. And you're going to receive Amai and Bayev. Two gifts. You Yerish me. You became my son. Is that a tzitkis? What's going on here? Because Avram is oozing with looking for excuses to be good. Now watch out. Watch out. I was on the telephone. I just got a message of one of them. Five couples recently. Five couples. And they were killing each other. Some worse than others. Killing each other. Criticism. Now I realized a certain akuda. I was once way back on the phone with an older couple and the guy was sounding off on his wife, him. I couldn't deal with it even. He was, she was defensive. She, Bechab was, he was, in all these other cases, everybody had what to say. But here, she was the, the nobody and he was a good guy. He was putting on, he was good at it. He opened his mouth. I says, I'm hanging up. I can't deal with this. It hurts my ears. She did this and she did that. And <laughs> now, I want to tell you something. We don't even realize that it's a horror to see evil. Now, uh, uh, I'll get you on the rebound. I know people who went through a life like that. You know what I tell them? The greatness of a person who has, like Melchor Yehuda Lefkowitz, he said, Melchor Yehuda Lefkowitz, he said, those those Nebuch, those guys that are off, they're what you watch out with them. No criticism! Their mind is swimming with the criticism of the younger years. Every move they make, mm, mm, mm. It's a replay. It goes on the whole lifetime. He can't say a word to them. And I say this for a lot of the regular people. There's too much criticism going on nonstop. Don't say anything. You're not allowed to. He's got enough red lights. It's time for some green lights. He can't. He's too, too much. So, because some people don't hop that, you know, when you say a piece of tire. Some people, there are people like that, that when you tell someone a piece of Torah, some people are there to tell you what's wrong. You know, Ramosha Hamnik from Chaim Bolin told me way back, I think it's the Shuzer Biak of Yosef, someone, every Friday night somebody said a, a set over a ktsais, or a pshat on a ktsais, I'm not sure. And then they all fragged it up. That was the order of the evening. Say the choice and we'll, we'll kill you. <laughs> that's no, no, well, let's kill him. Now, that's a learning. That's great. That was, that's great. I like that. I mean, not, I'll tell you, when I tell over my stuff, I have different people to speak to. There are people I avoid. Some people may have akpadas on me. I avoid some people. No matter what I'm going to say, they're going to tell me it was great. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with that. I need there are other people that are no matter what I'm gonna say, it's no good. I can't deal with you either. I need a balance. So there are certain people I select. I select people who know a lot, have a lot of ideas. You know, Chacham is, is a big preference. I want to just going going out to the public. Pobol Chaveir makes a different world. I, I had this, I talked this over. I didn't just write it. And I like the guy in the middle. But anyway, now that comes with learning. But when you're seeing a human being in front of you, when you see a human being, a chelik elikame mal, respect! I'm not into that so much. Because I'm desperate to take care of me. I'll get to you. Maybe in the next Gilgal. There's so much work. By the way, there are those that hold, I think it's like a I'm not sure. 
if you get involved in Yana, it's going to help you too. There are those that say that. Okay. Yesh for yesh. But that's the way you view a human being. What can I see good in this person? That's all I care about. I have no interest. When you see someone in front of you, I'm not interested in what's wrong with him. I have no interest in that garbage. It's disgusting. Who cares? I, I don't know. It hurts my ears. I, by the way, this younger man, I gave him a bracha. I have two such cases that lasted, that I know of. I'm sure there's hundreds. Less than a full year that at this point. They're both a year. I gave them both. Okay, listen to me. I'm not discussing a shalom bias with you because I can't deal with this. You're going to get me complicated. I don't have the time or the patience to hit all the yoshtik taira again. You wrote, obviously, a long, extensive pilpul why your wife is no good. In fact, you seem to lig in it. I didn't say this to the guy. But I'm saying it myself now, Ram, you seem to be heavily involved in all the bad things that he does, that she does. And you're, you're an expert at it. You're, you are, at this point, you're an authority on, you know, some people, they cut him. My life. I know cut him. I know Nizikin. Sock. That's my, I know Musa. People know different things. Your line is, what's wrong with this lady? You are so good at it. You're always finding new chedushim. And you're teletalem shalalachis. You know, the poor lady. What kind of life does she have? This guy, and she's a tzaddik, is this lady, Grada. Guess what happened? I says, I'm not getting involved. This guy made such a pilpul. How could I dare freg up a lifetime work? This is a life's, you know, this guy put time and kaiches and effort. You should know what I'm saying is so true. People do these things. They do these things, unfortunately, to themselves. They build a case against themselves. They do it subconsciously or consciously. And there's a whole pulpo. You can't, don't mess around. That's what it is. No, no, no. I know I'm no good. Don't, 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 don't. Don't say that. I, people have done that to me because I'm, I'm a positive type. I try to say nice. Hey, 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 look, look, please. I know myself. Don't tell me who I am. I know better. No, no, no. See, they look, they're, they're on, you know, they don't want me to upset a shtick taira that they have. Anyway, what I did to this guy is, I will refuse to listen. And I'm giving you guys a bracha, you're going to get Sholem Bayes. That story is, the last I heard of was about nine, ten months. By now it's, it's a year, they have Sholem Bayes. Big time! I gave one bracha. I have another one. That one's in the States. The other one's in Israel. They called me recently. I gave one bracha. Boom. Shalom bias. They called me again for the next issue. A year later. But whatever. I don't know. He's... But anyway, the, the Aroma Vino is in a world of what's good about him. No, it's not enough. I want more. No, what else is good? No, no, no. What else? I want to see good. I in toiva me talmidam shalom romavinu. You know what I in toiva is? The Belzer Rebbe Rabbarim Belzer. I heard this from one of the G'dayla Yerushalayim. I mean, uh, from the great Tami Chachamim and Torah builders in Yerushalayim who knew all the G'dayla. When I mentioned the Rebbe Belzer, he said he was way ahead of everybody. There's a literature discussing a chidusha. So, Rabbi Belzer, there was no one like him. And what was the source? Rabbi Shvager, Rabbi Matrofei, the Zatzal told me, I in Taiva! What does that have to do with his kedusha, his learning, his reasons? He said, yes, it is so powerful. I in Taiva, it brings everything. And his I in Taiva was weird. He saw things like, come on, are you serious? Oh, oh, the, the guys, the, the, the friar there, you know, the Zionist, the Well, they skipped the Mishnah in, in, uh, 
in Shabbos, so that's why he's driving the car. He, he, he's a tzaddik. Goodbye. It was ridiculous. He, he we let him tell of ever all the Chil Shabbos. He didn't see no Chil Shabbos. Oh, oh, no, they, they, there's a baby being born. That's, that's all it is. That's all. No, it's Mutalach. They're Oisik the Mitzvah. What are you talking about? That's Rabbi Mabelz was through and through like that. Bashita, you know how much he great he became? Because of that. That was the Sherish of the entire Rabbi Mabelz. Chusia Ganaleno and my Shvagar Matra Feder, who never saw a woman in his life. We're all made, the whole family, including my mother. My, my brother in law, he's not Malach like him, no shots word for word. He had guests like this who who owned his house and they, they parked themselves and made themselves comfortable as if it's theirs. This when, when I came to him, you know, the, I, I came for the shiva. I couldn't find the place because this guy was smoking. This, no, um, sorry, I live here. Where'd you come from? And the other end, there has another guy, also an interesting guy. This is my. That room is my territory. And there was a sign in the middle of the house. Any goods left over 30 days? <laughs> what do you? There was a, t- a house of Cranites. He was a Belzechus. Uh, uh, that was the house. My sister, at Sadekis, she had a big Olam Habat. Her name was Rachel. Rachel should be a Melitza Yeshe for all of us. A holy woman, my big sister Rachel Bas, from Nachman. And she was at Sadekis Gemura. Somebody told me. She had a house of 10, 20 people every, every Shabbos. They weren't wealthy. And he spent him and his wife. He was Avroma Venus Gilgal. My father, as I tell you, used to say, that's Avroma Venus Gilgal over there. He used to peel potatoes every Shabbos. He, but he was busy with the guests and the, if, uh, this guest, Beryl, Beryl Nebuch, who lived the other end of Crown Heights, he used to go out in freezing weather. Beryl had no family. And he used to knock on Beryl's door. Beryl, Kimaran, come eat with us. He's worried about Beryl, the, who smells a mile. Come, Beryl. You're our guest. We love you, Beryl. And he dealt with women. This I didn't know. Kids told me this. He never looked at a woman in his life. They had a woman there once who was in jail. And they got her out of jail. For, she was supposed to be quite dangerous. You know? With a knife, with a story, with, you know, one of those interesting women. And she got out for a weekend. So she parked themselves at the faders. They were gladly, ah, oh, pleasure to have you. <laughs> and their stories, the way he dealt with the women, he helped them. Don't ask me how he didn't look at them. He never, ever looked at a woman. I don't know how he, he, he cared for them without looking at them. He was a mythos. I want to mention something. Not everybody can do these things. And I just want to mention, he never looked. I heard there was a chevron, a real tzaddik from one of Rosh Shiv's a chevron. Somebody I know remarked how he dealt in that sugya, how he was very careful. He was very careful with his eyes. And at the same time, he didn't hurt the lady's feelings. I want to warn you. Not everybody's good at that. And if you're not good at it, and it ain't healthy for you to look, just don't look. Don't be a tzaddik. It's, it's serious, but I'm not very problems, by the way. To hurt a lady's feelings, that's not a joke. Kakibalti is far from a joke. But I will tell you, it's, a, it's worse if you have an issue with that stuff. And you're not supposed to look. And it's going to hurt you if you look. So you're not a nice guy. It's tough. You know, I, I once witnessed this. A Yekish lady in a family that's see them, yek, all kinds, you know. And I was there and she was complaining to me that the Bachrim, they, they were a Chsidish Bachrim. No one said Mazel Tov to me, this Yekish lady. They, they just ignore me. They don't even say Mazel Tov to the Oh, my opa, I don't know what they call them, the yuckies. I'm a half yuck, so I can joke around. You, know, you don't even say, you know. And that's what she's told me. And I was so proud of those Hasidish guys. I said, that's what you have to say. I didn't say anything to her. You are so disappointed, and I'm so proud. 
<laughs> they, then they weren't good at it. So not everybody's such a tzaddik that to be nice and you can't, so you're tough. That's you. Or avoid the whole problem if you can. Instead of, you know, being there and then you have to be nice and you can't be nice. Anyway, but he was an ish, ish pella, Ramat Hafedez. He decided on being like a Brahmavino. I'm going to tell you, my sister, Allah, Shalom. Tonight is the yard site that she came into a dream. Mama Rachel, the yard site. Whatever. You know who she was? I'll tell you one thing about her. We have a Zayd and a Baba. He is chus. We had a Zayd and a Baba. Their name was Tedesco. I kind of, my connection with Rizal Salanta, with Musa, and in France, of all places, has to do, I'm named after a Tedesco. The, the, my namesake, he was a Yekish person. Leon Wexler, his name was. And he, he, um, anyway, his Elta Zayda and Elta Baba were, were not buried properly. In France, it's a Hurban. The French people are, they're, they're Hefka. And for years and years, years and years, a hundred years already, they weren't buried. And they were somewhere in, stuck in a wall somewhere. It's a Shrek. And these people with Tzaddik and Gemur, they said about my Baba that she was the only Shaitl in Paris. I'm not sure what the truth is, but that's what they said. And they said about him, he was a Shamshavol Hirsch's Mechut. No, you know what that means? He was a Mechut and Shamshavol Hirsch. And he was at Tzaddik and said, He was a Mechut and Shamshavol They once threw him down the stairs, the Maskilim. He was fire, my Elta Zayda. Anyway, they were nowhere. And they, they spent 10 years pleading with the French government to do something. And the French couldn't care less, anti-Semites. The day my sister was Nifta. The day my sister Rachel was Nifta come inside. That day, the chief of police suddenly objecting cop. He suddenly became Mr. Nice Guy. Let him go free. You let him go. And they made a big Leviah in Eretz Yisrael with thousands of Enoch, Hasidish, Litvakis, maybe some Yekis they still have. Whatever, all the, our family. You know who was part of that family? Neuvert from, from Shmir Shabbos Kochosa. He's related. He's from the same family. We're all descendants from this people. And my, the day she was Nifta. Don't ask me what's going on in Shemayim. She used to deal with one of the, one of in the family was having a very hard time with Shidduchim. Right after she was left to that person, they would read one Shidduch after another. Hey, she said, oh, my sister, Rahul. And she spent a lifetime, she and her husband was, Avram and Sarah. Ah, no, no, no. Hey, what? Was it a dream? A dream. She came in a dream. I'm not going to go into the details. It was a dream. <coughs> And she, there's been a few of them, I'm told. And I'll tell you something. Somebody saw her in a dream. And she looked super happy. When she was alive, she struggled with being the Simcha. And the biggest shvach I heard from her was somebody who ate there. She had interesting people. <laughs> and you had to have Savlonis. So, one of them you needed to be a therapist, ten therapists, and she had a whole chassan of them. And she, at two o'clock in the morning, they used to roll in, and she, she, she took care of them. What are you talking? The Yerushalayim, the titkas that she had. And he never saw a woman in his life, you imagine? Huh? We all saw it, the whole family noticed how, how he was, he was a, Inspiration. He was Hasidish. We were not so Hasidish like him. A strimal, wow. Yeah, but that was the matter. Anyway. Um, the big honor of yelled himself to be a nobody. The, the dream she, somebody noticed she looked super happy. Super happy in the dream. And he remembered her. She didn't look like that. Because she, 
In fact, the biggest shvach was somebody who used to be a guest there mentioned it was stress on her. It wasn't easy. She didn't look like, you know, Mr. Happy Guy. It was, that's what he noticed. And to me, that's worth the whole business. When you have difficulty, then you're a winner. That's my books. Any difficulty, you're my friend. I don't care what you did. Yeah, difficult. Ah. You had a, anyway, whatever. Don't, don't look for trouble, but anyway. So uh, she looked super happy. And somebody mentioned, somebody who knew her, she wasn't like that when she was alive. And he asked his Rebbe about it. His Rebbe, she used to much as her with Simcha. She used to try. And he said, when you work hard in this world, on Amida, in the next world, you get it. You don't have to have it get it here. You're not going to get it here. I heard this in the Vardig once. You're gonna, your lab dafke, my Rebbe Rebbeiser once told me, you're going to get all those things you're hunting after, lab dafke. Just keep at it. You're part of the club. You're part of the club. You know what happens if you make a chajban on what you're doing? You're going to be part of Mari the chajban as Sherman Munim speaks about it. Ah. No wonder Avram Avinu, people who made a chajban of what they did at nighttime, and nowadays it means you know, like once a month for about right two things that's more than enough you're one of the because people are so flying all over like you expect a guy to stay in age I'll tell you my Zerav there's a saber called Cheshben and Efesh it's phenomenal it is Zerizig it shows you how you you know Zerizis Nikias Precious and it's all systematic now you do this for a week and put put a dot when you overcome this and you put an X and put a this. And this guy showed it to Rav Hutna. I'd like to do that, he tells him. Rav Hutna says, do you, know, do you live near the L train? You know the elevator trains, you know. The, man, the, that was the, the one who wrote that did not have the L train banging him in his head all day. <laughs> That's what I heard. Now, what? There was a practical down. It's not for us. You want to go Meshuggah and try to be like one of in Kelm? You're not in Kelm. We're not in Slabot. You're not in Navarre. We're a bunch of Harrys. So what? Maybe still likes us the way we are. As is condition. It's great. I like the way I am. You know that the biggest of in the world is just stay the way you want. Spend your whole lifetime being happy. You, you will be Zeicher to everything. Just be happy the way it is. And it's not easy. Anyway, so what was I saying? The, um, oh, yeah. So the, um, I'm going to tell you, not the rice. First, I just want to be my or something. Abraham Albino, what he told Light, the way he treated Light, we Sadaim, he's sticking up. Sadaim had signs all over Sadaim. We hate Abraham. There's no question. He was so unpopular. Abraham Avinu was Mr. Unpopular. In his dare to get away with what he did, he was against everybody, single-handedly. Ach, he was alone. And when he was in the Kibshon Aish, Gabriel Amalek wanted to save his life. He said, no, I'm going down. He's one. He's only one. There's one Avram in the world. No one else. And I'm one. One will save one. You, Gabriel Amalach, in a couple of thousand years from now, I'll have three descendants, Hananiah, Mishol, and Azariah, who are also going to go to fire al Kiddush Hashem. And you'll go down. Then you'll save. You'll save them. But for him, I want to save him. Look, look, look at Avram. Avram Avinu, it's so emotional. When you think of Avram Avinu, you can go out of your mind. Avram Avinu, Avram Avinu, Avram. 
You know, he was the hero of Slabotka and the hero of Novadik. Nobody like him. Rabbi Miller? Avrom. Forget it. Nobody like Avrom. And Novadik, what they like about him? Avrom are every. The whole world's on one side, I'm on the other side. A faf on the whole world. He took, I picture myself smashing idols all day like him. And the idols are everywhere. The telephone could also be idols. The whole world has to call you? What do you get? Get lost. Another idol. Covet. Everything's an idol. Building. Whoa, another idol. What's a building? He's scaring you? This guy. Who? This doctor. Another idol. Doctor. A lawyer. Lawyer. Oh, what do you want to do? You can turn a Rosh Hashiva into an idol also. You got to watch it. Everybody. Don't make gods out of people. Don't make God's out of humans. We all do it. Don't. You know what he said? He doesn't like me. So therefore what? He goes to the toilet. What are you getting excited about? You know, it goes on in toilets. Nowadays they cover up everything. You know, a long time ago they had outhouses. So you had at least an idea of what's going on in the world. A reality. <laughs> Nowadays it's gone. So nothing happened. You're forgetting who you are. You're, you are a human. And you're forgetting who the other, all these guys are scared of. They're all, all toilet members. <laughs> all, all toilet guys. And I am quoting the Kanak Yemach, B'Shem Yeshai Anovi. And I'm quoting the Chavis Havavas who screams about this. He screams about how they smell when they die. I once read about about soldiers and the uh, Vietnam War, I think it was, one of the comrades, he, he fell and they had to get his body. And, <laughs> oh, to get his body was Gehenna. They go into 10 toilets rather than get this guy's body. You know, the Chavis of Obama says a human being smells much worse than an animal. You know that? When he's dead. It's a Shrek. That's the guy you're afraid of so much. I once saw. I don't want to say his name. I used to learn a base medish. There was, I was a librarian and there was a work study job in BMG. So I used to work in the library. I used to learn and I got paid for sitting there. I was in charge. I don't even remember way, way back when Lake was much smaller than it is today. And there was somebody there, a reason a hush of a person. He was from the up and coming. And he was really a personality with rosy cheeks. A somebody, big time. Come inside, Chava. There's room. Come inside. Anyway, this guy used to watch me when I learned. And I felt like, I felt good. He once made a remark, how I learned Gishmak or something. I got it, got back to me, I thought like $2 million. He was a big name in Lakeland. I don't want to say who it was. It was a big name in Lakewood. And I was plenty scared of him. To say hello to him would have been a prat for me. Uh, Shalom Aleichem. You know. Come inside, Trevor. Yeah, there's plenty of room. And I, the guy never was nifty young. And I saw part of his body in the box. They picked up, opened up for a second. And I said, that's the guy you're so scared of. No. What are you so scared of? It's a big lesson for me. But you, you got to hear this lesson every day again and again. So scared of him? Look at him. Bunch of, he, it's over. And that's who you're so worried about. What he thinks of you, his opinion. What's the difference what his opinion is? You got to see people where they're heading before you get so to doodle though. You have to see Ahmed Lamos. Ahmed Let's face reality. We're not, nobody there. You imagine people that live in pre-war Europe. And imagine a place like Varsha. But a half a million Jews were in Varsha? How many? It was packed. The place was teeming. Hashver, come, come. Hundreds of thousands of, of Poland, Polish Jewry, what it looked like. And we're, and, and everybody's concerned. Your opinion? Did I make a good impression? Imagine a lady who's worried. Those ladies, I, 
They had other problems than our ladies. I don't believe they were into dressing. They were into, they had red flags, those Polish women. They had seriousness, yeahness. A Polish Jewish woman, if she, if she was a communist very often, you know that. Rabbi Chaim Halpern told me, he saw that trolley cars in Barsha. He saw this girl taking a red flag and throwing it over them. She was a tough woman. Oh, those Polish girls, they had cheetahs. You know what they looked like? The from ones? No shakel. Short sleeves. That was the from. And they weren't dressy. We're not into that stuff. There's a pacha. There's a reason why Hitler came. But these were the wives of Chesidah You know that? The nudes are. I'm not, the old ones are good. We're okay. But the, the young ones? It was dying out. Chayashua was going. It was sliding. Oh, Hashem Yerachim. Rabbi Miller speaks about it. Shem, whatever. But the, um, what was that? Where am I up to? You guys got to help me out. I'm an Avardi guy. I don't need the whole cup. Where am I up to, guys? What? Don't be afraid. Now, it's pre-war Europe, 1939. The Nazis just arrived. There's pictures. There's a, a row of 10 bearded Jews, Tzadikim, with the yarmulkes kicked off, and they're all trembling, and the Nazis are walking over to them one by one. And, you know, don't ask what happened, they, what they did. And two weeks earlier, they were sitting, and in fact, there's a famous picture of Alexander Chassidim. Alexander Reb is sitting there, and he's rolling with his Chassidim, all laughing. I don't know from the picture, brother. Alexander! Meeting, holy, holy people. They had a rebbe called Akedas Yitzchak, a tzaddik Yisri Deilam. All of the Alexander Chsidim, where they're wiped out, mamish. The Geras, Ger Alexander were the two big ones. Am I right? Do I know my history? Alexander was second to the biggest. The other Chsidis were much smaller. Maybe in Galicia, Bells was a little big. Rizhen, okay. I don't know how much they really had. But these two were gigantic. Um, and Alexander is gone, Hashem Yirach. And right before the day, that under that picture, there's this, it says, the, they're laughing, sitting on a park bench. The Rebbe with the Chesidim, a guy sitting here, and this guy standing here. They're all, I don't know what, I didn't hear the joke. It's not in the picture. I would have loved to hear what it was. But they were happy. It's a Kiddush Hashem that they looked like that. And it says underneath, this is the day the war broke out. Did they realize what's going to happen? They were probably mechazik and betachem. They had an idea, maybe. Did they? And, okay, so you liked my joke. You didn't like my joke. I'm not talking about... But people were concerned. And then it, within weeks, it's over. You're gone, you're gone. It's... Whoa! It, it's over. Overnight. And everybody is so stressed out over other people's opinions. And on one day, what opinion? What is, your, what is your opinion worth? The war breaks out one minute. All opinions are gone. Who cares? Do you count? And people are so worried. Now, Brahma Vinu got up and he faffed on the whole world. I don't care what you're I'm sticking up for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So in the Varnig, their hero is Avraham Avinu. I once told a vote to Reb Gershon about Avraham Avinu and he didn't like it. It wasn't L'Chavid Avraham Avinu. I didn't chop what I was saying. I was just trying to say, you know, a battle over there. I remember certain, I'll tell you privately, but he told me the Reb Gershon was super me. Every move I, I made was Kedosh Kedosh. He loved me. Reb Gershon treated me like a father. He was Avram Avinu's. Boy, was he his Gilgal. His Ave Sabrias. His love. I was the depressive guy. And he, I saw, he noticed it. He started oozing with simcha just to cheer me up. And he got more simcha and he smiled to me and he smiled again and he smiled again and he, he was smiling in his sleep. Smiling was a joke. Maybe in Kelm, I'm not putting down Kelm, but in Kelm they worked on a plastic smile it was plenty chashub in Kelm. So they worked, you know, our respondent. And the Vardy, you were smiled, your whole neshama was smiling because you hated COVID. You learned so much Musa that 
especially people like Rabbi Gershon, it was like ridiculous. A semcha, he oozed with semcha. And, Abram, and I said a vot about Avram Avinu that he didn't like. And he suddenly trembled. He like, he got like something happened. Uh, and I, he looked like, so I, I was speaking about his closest relative, as if I was talking about his son or his father. He mamish, he was so real about a role of him. No, 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 no. You can't say that. I can't describe. I can't explain it. What I, I noticed this. I wasn't looking to, I just noticed it wasn't stomach reaction of be meich on the cover. People do that today. Okay. Very good. You got to be, have covered. It was personal. He was hurt. He was, it, it can't be mass. And by the way, they say, I don't know if it's true. A couple of years before his nifta and the sukkah, the Shpiz and Avram, he said, you don't see him? I see him. I could believe that one for sure. The only thing that's hard to believe is that Rav should be Megala himself. <laughs> that part's hard to believe. He would like to say, like, you know, me, I should need Avram. Bug off with that stuff, you know. That's more his style. You know, I was once following him in the hallway, and he was going to eat. And it was Arab Shabbat, I forgot what it was. He, he sees me schlepping along. Kim, come along. You want some shrayim? Come. I'll give you some shrayim. <laughs> yeah, like he's the rabbi. Yeah, come along. I told you about the conflicts. Everybody heard. We, we eating. He was eating. Navardigas believe in good eat. They just don't believe in rules. Who made up that rule? Peas and carrots? No, 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 no. What do you mean, Matamsam yourself? The Vardigs don't like when you put yourself in a straight jacket. They don't like that. They want to be relaxed. So the whole, the whole world makes you like this. You know, you got to be like this. You got to be like that or else it's no good. They hate that. They fight it all the, all the, so he was, he was, he, he was sitting here. I was sitting here and he had a plate. He had soup. He had meat. He had potatoes. He had the whole, vegetables. Here he had black coffee on, on a thing like this. And here he had a tin can full of cornflakes. And he was eating and he took the cornflakes and he dumped it in his food. And he ate, he dumped it in his soup, took another few. He dumped I saw this my own eyes. He dumped it into the black coffee and he started drinking. I saw this. And then he suddenly says, oh, I didn't notice. I, I'm so sorry. And he digs his hand in his in the tin can, he dumps it all over my stuff. That's a cornflakes view. They made a joke out of food. I once saw a Nevada a young guy purposely take something that was a little dafka took him. All right, I'm fine. You know, by us, I don't like that. By the way, I'm going to confess. I shouldn't. I should never put myself down. I'm not so great with this. <laughs> I mean, most things I talk about, I have some shaykhs with, you know, so I feel comfortable talking about it. I'm not the biggest in that, but I'm in, the, I'm in that league. This stuff, I got it just recently. I was, mm-hmm. no, no, I I don't like that. I want this, you know. I can do that. I'm like that. <laughs> Salah, you got to know where you're holding. I'm not giving that up so fast. You know, if I have to give stuff up, that's the list on my list. <laughs> you have a good food. Especially in the Vardy, they told me this many times. Don't worry about eating. So I'm a kind that for sure. I decided this is a good religion for me. They'll let me keep eating. I don't care what you tell me. As long as I, as long as I can eat my head off. Come tonight, come inside, Chavda. Mach Freyla. We have some Johnny Walker, black label. Anyway. Hey. The, these guys see how Johnny, you know, everybody talks about my vadim and they all know what I drink. They know my jokes. By the way, I became very unpopular since I'm on the, I'm serious. I make jokes. Mandel, I just heard you last night. Oh, you heard that joke? Yeah, I know that joke. All my jokes, they know it. They're bucky and, you know, I can't, I can't say anything new. Anyway, yes, I considered myself an interesting guy that could tell over a nice book. And nowadays, oh, that part, I heard that list you already. On this, the, the tape number 62, somebody <laughs> made a scene. He heard 70 tapes of me. 
and he made a sin. He made a whole big thing. See this guy he made a whole sin that he heard seventy tapes. Oh, he told her, his friend told me about it. Uh, there are more. I have a lot of see them who are my see them. Have a, you know what happened right here in Lakewood? I promise you, I didn't make it up. A young man comes into my house last week, gives me, leaves me three hundred sixty dollars, and he has a story. As good as the money was, the story is even, even better. He says, "On Simchas Torah, he go, He's in a certain stable here in Lakewood, and for Simchas Torah, he jumped up on his friend, his shoulders." And they were dancing around, and he was waving a Betachem Weekly. <laughs> you know what's going on? Did you ever hear the story with the lady in Betachem Weekly? I must have. This so possible. This man, come here. Yankel, you're the sweetest guy that ever lived. Yankel, this guy's sugar. Yankel, next time you come, I'm, I'm not going to eat supper. I'll eat you instead. Don't tell my wife. Isn't he delicious? This guy he works on some, he's at Sadiq. He makes my Betachem weekly in, in, in English. He's, a, he's my Tfilis. Rabbi Yosef is also my Tfilis. You're also my Tfilis. All you guys, I daven a lot. And I get the, the size of the crowd. It's all davening. I asked for a big crowd. I got a big crowd. I asked for the most Gishmaki guys in liquid. I get it. I get it. I got you. I got you. All you guys are results of my Tfilis. What did Tana say? I daven for him. It's a different vod. Oh, Shmuel and Avi. You got all these guys. He's chashev. It's all tefillah. So, all you guys are tefillah. Even this guy is tefillah. I'm joking. Anyway. Johnny. What would you do without Johnny? In the days of COVID, when everybody abandoned me, I talked to the wall. Johnny was still there at my side. <laughs> Come inside. What's new? We had a good time yesterday. We were dancing our heads off. Come inside. Come inside. There's hope for us, the younger generation. I want to tell you something. You wait till you hear this. You had a story? There's a kid, a Z's kite. I mean, this happened a couple of years ago. A Z's kite. He, he comes to my thing. I have a lot of sweet kids coming. To, all these sweetest kids in Gans Lakewood come to my shul. So someone went over to him and says, Where do you dab him? He says, um, I dab Mandel Shar Batachin. So he says, Shar Batachin, sure. So he says, uh, How many people do they have there? So the kid says, In the Vardig, we're not into that garbage. How many people? How many people? That's covered. We don't go for that stuff. A kid, uh, how old is he? 10? Ah, uh, Gersi, though, you like that? A ten-year-old kid should know that's a chinuch. What I did to that garbage, you know, goes on between all these. Uh, well, we have a big island. We have a big our rebbe has thousands. Yeah, oh, your rebbe? Oh, see, you're not from the big. No, never. I got to tell you what now. It's good I to hear it. I hold this teres emes. Rapapa basra is not a joke. I hold myself. The Abish was megalot to me. I daven a lot for my. This should be the real stuff. Why was Sarah so angry at, at, uh, at Hagar? But take out, give to me now. You're married 90 years. You never had one pregnant at once. I just got married. Boom. But take out, give it to me now. No. You're not such a tzaddikist. I got your number. That's the story, right? When Sarah heard that, she, she let her have it. You want to see the psukim say Vatan and she tortured Vatan and she tortured her, whatever that means. She was fuming at her. She's you're gonna get it for that one. Sora Imenu was not Makbet on her covet. I'm sorry. She had no shaykhus with it. There's no question. How can you touch her like that? Now in Slabotka they touched because a Talmud has to have a certain respect. And she didn't have respect. It's a good shot, but I still hold that I hit the emiss on the nose. You want to hear it? Here it goes. The concept of looking down at a person that's not making it, that's the biggest poison in the universe. That's what got Sara so upset with her. You're going to look down at somebody that's not quite... This guy doesn't have nachos. He's no good. This guy has has a harder time with learning. He has a shvach and a shava. This guy, 
He's not matzliach with this, with business, whatever it is. He's up contract. All the nevachs and the garbage and all the guys who make it, they're the good guys. That's Asaph. Asaph is Lashon Asiyah. If it's done, it's good. It's not done. Don't give me he tried. It doesn't mean a thing. Trying doesn't mean nothing. The mentality. You don't, you don't believe in Lafum Tzaira Agra. You don't recognize the greatness of somebody who, str- who struggles. It means nothing to you. The winner. And you teach the winner that you're the good guy around here. That's the biggest poison in the world. Like that Sari says, Ashman al Hari. My is a Khan Rafa. They used to get together, all the Hungarian used to get together. And on on Cholomai Tsukis, uh Pesach. Because then but my fried given. They freed from the Germans. That was the big So somebody got up there, one of the relatives, and said, I am the only one left from the whole family. My Shvet blew a gun. So you think that you're a Gansa Tzaddik over here. My brother was better than me, and I'm around and he's not. You're going to make a whole thing that you're better? So that's, that has a lot to do with it. I take, I'll give it, oh, I made it, he died, I'm still alive. I'm the good guy, you're the bad guy. You can't do that stuff. You can't do none of that stuff. By the way, I would say that the guy who was left alive should talk to feel he's better. And the guy who who was not much there, should feel he's better for a different reason because Shem likes me more. He's giving me punishment in this world. Every guy should walk around feeling I'm the good guy. That's my shit. Anyway. Oh, but that's where are we up to? Who? Yeah, okay, that's the vote. That's that's the vote. Anyway, I tell you another thing about the truth. I'm a big liar. Everybody knows that. People have tightness on me. I don't not, I don't see Abraham Avinu lied and said, this is my sister. That's a lie. Lie number one. That's the first story of Avram Avinu, a lie. Of course, we understand. I'm still. Are you wanting some more lies? The Abishta and Pashas Vayera. When he tells um, Avram Avinu, you know, Sarah said that she's too old. She didn't say this. She said, you're too old. So Avram didn't tell it over the way it happened. He, because he didn't want her, he didn't want Avram to hear that Sarah held, you're over the hill. So he changed it. The Avishta should say a lie. A pasik of the holy Torah Sabbath. You want to hear more? Let's get Yaakov Avinu. The first pasha of Yaakov Avinu, Yaakveni Zeb Hamayim. You tricked me twice. That's Yaakov. He's supposed to be known for Emes. Two, two lies. The, you know, two stories with the Bukhaira, with the, he's, he's full of lies. All he knows how to do, he tricks. He's a tricky, he's a liar. Then you have Yehuda. Yehuda says, I don't want Toma to marry you. Uh, uh, he says, Toma, uh, my son Shayla, he's not ready for marriage yet. He's younger. He did he had no intentions of, you know, he lost two sons through Toma. He says, she's a Katlanist. I don't want her in the family. She's a dangerous lady, you know. So, uh, wait till Shayla grows up. It's a lie. She saw it was a lie. She figured it out. You heard the lies? Yaakov lies twice? The Avish, the Avram Avinu? Everyone's lying around here. What's the pshat? They're all lying. Those Jews, you know? <laughs> Those Jews, a bunch of lies. You know? It's called Sefer Yosha. You have to have Seichel. You have to have Seichel. The truth is what's Seichel. Now, I am big into lying. Bashita, I lie my head off all day long. Rabbi Miller has a tape called The Artificial Man. Rabbi Miller lied. It's famous. He said, I'm not sure if it's Rabbi Isaac Sher or Baron Grzynski. One of his two Rabbi in Slobodka. The first vod he came to, he said, the guy said, let's talk about Emes. So, so he said, Emes? The Rosh Shabbat? No way! With Emes, you're going nowhere. I, myself, <laughs> took a walk with Rabbi Miller. He started praising somebody. Wonderful person, wonderful. He said on everybody that love Dafki, you know. They showed him the Anaklach over there. Uh, Rabbi Miller's Anaklach. This is what I heard. I heard this. I couldn't believe it. Believe me. I do this all the time. I try to do it. Uh, they showed the Anaklach are acting up. They're acting like a bunch of animals. And the, the children were upset. Uh oh. Look at the Anaklach jumping all over the house. He comes, wonderful children. They're wonderful. Well, see, 
learn to lie. Learn to lie on your, about yourself. I'm a great guy. You may have to do a lot of that stuff. Don't be afraid of lies. I, I want, I had to mock tests recently. Here's my rule book. I'll tell you how many hundreds I had. I'll tell you straight. I have 30 of the whole class. I would say I thought I didn't do well. The kids aren't getting hundreds. A reflection on me. That's the what I thought until I, I looked at the test. I had to put it into my rule book. And I thought, what are you crazy? Almost everybody got a hundred. Why is it that in my mind, so few got a hundred? Because you're living in Dimyan. People are so negative. They are wrong in everything they do. Because they've got a case against themselves. And they don't even do it. They realize it subconsciously. You made a joke. People didn't like it. This guy, he doesn't like you anymore. This guy, you said something wrong. Probably he don't like me. The people are heavy into negatives. The only way to fight negatives is to go extreme. And say positive even when you think you're lying. You're not really lying. I once read this in a Gaiusha book way, way back. That most things are positive. But people think that things are negative. You know, I once read the shame one of the big educators. They said the average Gaiusha kid... After he's at, when by the time he's in high school, he has thousands of negative thoughts in his mind. When he's a little kid, he's a little scared, but he's basically positive. As he gets older, through the years, everything hits him way too hard. People are very, very insecure because they interpret things as mm-hmm. that's another proof that I'm no good. There's another proof that I'm, you know the optimist Labotka. He took a look at a group of people walking the street, and he said, just tell me, the, what do you see? Some of them said, we well, see a nice group of people. He says, I see a Lebedic and Beis Akvaris. I see a live graveyard. He says, you see that water? Masa Trega? He could have been a Mashkiach in the Yeshiva. I know the guy. But he thinks he's in. So here, there he is, water carrier. You see that guy who's walking around? He can barely earn a living. He doesn't know who he really is. He could be such a gain and such a tzaddik, but he looks at himself like he's nobody. So he's nobody. And he one after another, the Alton Slobodka pointed out, and he said, there is a, this is a live Beisach Kvaris. Except the difference is that a normal Beisach Kvaris, he, Hashem made him, he should be Nifta. And people buried him, and they put him at Seva. And the, these guys, they, they killed themselves. And they made their own Matsevas, because they never became who they really are, because there's so many, so much negative stuff coming at you. Every move you make, you're getting, as Rabbi Ruchim said, that these days, and he said this over a hundred years ago, you have to learn Musa, Ishvili, Nivra, Oilam all day. It's the beginning. Avram, Avram, Raimamus, the first of all the others. Is Raymond, you got all, and was he able to tell him, I got the Shemach, don't worry, I'll make you big. Look, look how he talks. Looks like Avram's an egomaniac. That's what, that's sweet music to his ears. How is he gonna reach him? That's not the only time. He's always telling him, I'm gonna make you big, and whatever you do, big. He's supposed to be such a none of. What's going on? And the Abish you, you'll make you big because the step one, Mashabeno, the first thing we know about big now Mashab became big. So he be, you know it became Mashab be, it was the head of Pari's palace. As soon as that happened, Bayaris, he saw his brother Zechov, Bayabis of Lexov. Now he's gonna come just a good guy. Before you become the big Balchesid who loves everybody, first love yourself. Look at yourself now. You want to relate? I, I, I used to watch my uncle Manus. He did a lot for me. I used to watch. I once watched him go over to Reb Nassim Bachtoyel, who was older than him, and he was uh, the Mashkiach of Lakewood. My uncle Manus was a chutz v'yid, a tzaddik, but he wasn't Mashkiach. And he walked over to me, took him in his hands with such love. How is the Mashkiach feeling? It struck me. It, you're not scared of him, the Mashkiach of Lakewood. My uncle Manus didn't have those barriers. So I had to work a lot. I still do. 
You go to a big rush. Don't be scared of all these people. You have to break the barrier. Put them, you know, you may have to do some nasty stuff I don't want to say in public. And, what, and I'm going to tell you what I told the guy that teaches alongside with me. I told him once, in the summertime, this young guy is old enough to be my anical, and he gets a job to teach alongside Mandel. So he told me himself, he told me openly. He says, I feel like, you know, he says, listen here, before you walk into class, I want you to spend a long time. The guy that teaches next to me, Mandel, he's an old guy. He's over the hill. He's not 100%. I am young. And I have all your talents. I want and my talents connect the summit. Don't be Messiah Das. I'm telling you, Rabbi Isai, have your main talent sitting and put it on an index card. And take it out every, ten times a day. It's not a joke. Because Yeh Jehovah is going to kill you. Yeah. Put you in the garbage can. Yeah? You'll never be what you could be. Because you know, you Messiah Das way too much. As a Rebbe, you know, you're going to be an honor. of? Watch the kids step all over you. I know somebody. Adam I don't want to say who it is. He, got, he came to Lake. He told a younger man in Lakewood, you got to love those kids. And the kid, the, the Rebbe tells me, he says, the kids are stepping all over me. I'm going to stop loving them. You know, sometimes, you stop loving them. And the it's going to be good. That's possible. But very, 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 very often, if you view yourself as an ant, and those little kids around you are jumbo elephants, you're not going to be loving nobody. You're petrified of them. How are you going to love them? First, you got to hold from yourself. Then you can walk in. I've done that. I once had a class, and I couldn't deal with it. And I used to daven every day. And I daven hard. I walked into class. My tools helped for the first five minutes. Right afterwards, they they were dancing on my head all over the place. And I was going nowhere with all my tefillas. So one day I says, no, no more of this stuff. You know what I did? I wrote down why I'm the best Rebbe that ever lived. And I made sure to put down all the other Rebbe's. That's part of, it, of the recipe. And then I walked into class. They never fired a shot after that. My Gaiva did the job. I told him, what's going No, 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 no. I'm bossy. I don't have to even say it. It's in me. Some people have to do this all the time. Sometimes I used to do this years ago. I don't need it as much. Possible. I go into a big crowd, a lot of people. I got a call from a chassidah shayi, from a big chassidah that's very super happy. And they're great guys. I like them. And this guy's a basket case. And he says, how can it be a basket case? He says, he's petrified. He comes into his own base medish and it's, you know, that's scary. I says, you know what you're going to be doing? And you stop being afraid of people. I've run with, you know, smashed all the idols. You'll have to do the same in your own base message. You're going to sit there and relax for a minute, up to five minutes, and be cool and laugh. And what's the difference? All the bathroom cases. They're only humans. And learn how to not be in this ball for people. That's enough, huh? They're getting, I'm getting signals. Getting, no, right, right here, stop. No, Rep Jack.